talk about gain measurements, and in particular, we're going to measure the gain of a pyramidal horn antenna. Uh, to, uh, to start the discussion, let's see what are the methods that we have in terms of uh, performing gain measurements. So if you want to perform gain measurements, typically we have two types of technique. One of them is absolute gain measurement. The other one is comparison. Comparison gain measurement. So what are the, what is the fundamental difference between these two sets of technique? In absolute gain measurement, you don't you do not need to know an antenna that you already know the gain of that antenna. So sometimes we have antennas or we purchase antennas that we already know the gain of the antenna at certain frequency. This antenna is called a standard gain. So sometimes we do have access to these antennas. And if you do have access to these antennas, then you compare your antenna under test with this standard gain. And that essentially becomes comparison gain measurement. But sometimes you do not have this standard gain, or you want to even make a standard gain. Then you need to go to absolute gain measurements techniques. And in this absolute gain measurement techniques, the assumption is you do not know, uh, you do not have the standard gain, and you essentially want to make one. So what we're going to see in this lab is that we, we first assume that we do not have any standard gain. So we're going to go and figure out the gain of a pyramidal horn antenna using absolute gain measurement, and then use uh, that antenna, the, the one that we figure out its gain, as a standard gain to find out the uh, the gain of another antenna. So we, we're going to start first from absolute gain measurement, and then we're going to go to comparison gain measurement. Now, uh, so you might ask, if we can do absolute gain measurement, what's that? What's the? Uh, why not always use absolute gain measurement? Why we do? Why do we even need comparison gain measurement? The main reason is absolute gain measurement. Sometimes you need to. You need to. You need to have, you need to create a measurements which satisfy some uh, conditions. For example, the one that we're going to be using in this uh, lab for absolute gain measurement is a technique called two antenna method. So for this to work, you essentially need two identical antennas. So, uh, so if you have two identical method antenna, that would be one technique to have absolute gain measurements. Uh, so as you see, having two identical antenna sometimes is not as straightforward. There are other methods, for example, three antenna methods that the antennas do not have to be uh, identical, but then that requires more measurements. Now, so what we're going to do right now is that we're going to focus on absolute gain measurement technique, and we're going to use two antenna method. And the assumption here is that these two antenna need to be identical. And then based on that, we can figure out the gain of these antennas. So let's start with the two antenna method. So to start our discussion, we're just going to write the Fries equation. So I'm just going to write the Fries equation. And in Fries equation here, I'm assuming that the two ports are matched, and I'm going to assume that there is no polarization loss factor involved here. So I'm just going to write it in a more simple way. So P received divided by P transmit would be equal to lambda wavelengths, 4 pi r, distance between the two antenna, the whole thing square, gain of transmit, gain of received. So again, we have also a mismatch, impedance mismatch at two port polarization loss factor that I ignored it in this uh, in this uh, presentation. So now, if if you if you look at this, if we are concerned with gain measurements, 
essentially we have two unknowns here. This is one unknown, this is the second unknown. And if we perform our measurement, we find PR, we find PT and so on, we have one equation. So we have one equation and two unknowns, which is uh, not possible to solve, but then we can do a trick. And the trick is we assume the two antennas are identical. So we exactly use the same antenna. So if I have transmit and receive antennas, which are identical, like for example, the one that we will be using in this experiment, for example, these two horn antennas are identical. We can use them as one transmit, one receive. Then gain of transmit and gain of receive would be exactly the same thing. So I can just call it simply gain times gain, gain squared. Now that makes it very easy because now I have one unknown. Therefore, the gain of the antenna would be equal to a square root of PR PT times 4 pi R divided by lambda. So now you can imagine that if you have your P received, if you can measure that, if you can measure P transmit, you know the distance you know the frequency of operation, therefore you know your wavelengths. So then, then you can find your gain. So that would be uh, essentially two antenna method. And if you do that, now you, you know the gain of your antenna, so you can later on use it as a standard gain for a gain comparison method. Now, so the question is, how do we find that? This is just simply by performing distance measurements. You know the frequency, so you know that. But I'm just going to talk a little bit about PT in our case. So in our case, we have two identical antennas like this. Now, if I, if I separate them by some distance, let's say in, in the lab, I think we're going to have one meter separation, you can measure P received. But now the question is, how do you find P transmit? And remember that the P received that you have here includes the effect of cables and so on, both on transmit and receive. So we want to be consistent in terms of our measurement. So to do that, we're just gonna we're just gonna remove the horn antenna to find the P transmit. We're gonna remove the horn antenna. So that essentially means, um, you see, this consists of two parts. This is coax to waveguide. So this is coax to waveguide adapter. I'm gonna remove that from the horn antenna. So I'm gonna, and I'm gonna do the same thing with the other antenna. So I'm gonna remove this coax to waveguide adapter. Now what I have what I have is essentially two coax to waveguide adapter, one belonging to transmit antenna, one belonging to receive antenna, and then I have cable going to uh, my system. So I'm gonna keep the cable too. Now I'm gonna just attach them, and using this setup, I'm gonna read the power. So th th then I'm gonna have this power, then the result of that would be P transmitted. And the nice thing about this P-transmitted is that it includes the effect of coax to waveguide adapter, the cables that's running. So that becomes my P-transmit when I do that, when I directly connect them. So there is no radiation here. It's just direct connection. So that would be my P-transmit. Then I, then I separate them. Now I'm going to rely on radiation. I put the antennas back, and I'm just going to read another one with the antenna connected to these adapters. And that would be my P received. After that, I, I, can, I have my P received and my P uh, transmitted. Then I can find the gain of the antenna. To start our uh, absolute gain measurement, we're gonna be we're gonna be removing the horn antenna from the transmit and receive mast. And then, as you know, we're gonna connect the coax to a waveguide adapter directly to each other. So. Let's start with removing the antenna from this mass.
So this would be our first horn antenna. We're gonna do the same thing with the other horn antenna. Okay, now we have our two horn antennas. So what we're going to do is that we're going to be removing this quick lock and then we're going to be connecting uh, the coax to waveguide adapter directly to each other. Now that we have removed our horn antennas, so let's, let's disconnect it from the coax to waveguide adapter. Now we have two pieces, horn antenna and the adapter. So for now, we're just gonna use the adapter. And then we're gonna do the same thing for the transmit antenna. Okay, now these are the two adapters that we have. So with the adapters, you want to just connect them directly to each other so that we can measure the transmit the transmit power. So I'm just going to connect them with the quick lock. So you see right now we have, this was the coax to waveguide adapter for receiving antenna. And this was the coax to waveguide adapter for the transmit antenna. Now I just connected them directly to each other. Now, what I need to do would be to connect it to the cable and then start performing P transmit measurement. Okay, we have the coax to waveguide adapter connected to each other. So I'm just gonna use exactly the same cable that I'm gonna be using later on in my uh, P received measurement using the horn antenna. I'm going to be using exactly the same cable so that the effects of the cables are taken into account. So now this is for, that was for the waveguide coming from the receive antenna. And I'm going to do another one for the waveguide for the transmit antenna. So now if you, if you take a look, right now I have my, this, this coaxial cable brings the uh, power from the RF generator and is directly coupled to this uh, ad adapter. And then I'm gonna pick up the power by this coaxial cable and it goes to the data collection. Now, because this is a direct connection so we, I'm not going to be dealing with propagation loss factor in free space. I'm going to add a 10 dB attenuator uh, in, the, in my data collection system. So I have a 10 dB data, 10 dB attenuator. We use the same attenuator when we were doing dipole measurements. So uh, I'm going to be connecting this to, the, to this port and I'm just gonna now connect the cable, which is for the received power to this 10 dB attenuator. This 10 dB attenuator, uh, the, the reason I'm using it here is because, as I mentioned, we are not performing free space measurements. So the level of the power would be higher in this case. So, and then I'm going to also keep the same 10 dB attenuator when I'm doing the actual horn antenna experiment. So, we need whatever we do in this measurements, we need to keep it the same when we go to uh, our horn antenna measurements. So, now I have uh, these uh, waveguides connected to each other, and I can start performing my measurements. 
So now to do that, I'm going to make the power on. So now the power is on and I need to check the receive signal by the software. So when I when I check the signal by the software, I might have the same saturation issue. So right now, for example, it shows zero dB. So using the software, I'm going to apply some attenuation. If if you remember, there was an attenuation control in the software so that I can bring it below zero dB to make sure that I'm not dealing with the saturation. Okay, we've now connected the two waveguide adapters directly to each other. So we, the RF power is on. We applied 10 dB attenuator right at the data collection. So even with that 10 dB attenuator, when we're collecting the signal, as you see, the signal level is right now 0 dB. Remember that I'm not going to press a start acquisition in this case because it's not the pattern of the antenna. The antenna there is no antenna to rotate azimuthly so that we find the pattern. So I'm just going to look at the signal level in this experiment right now. But then from saturation, you know that sometimes we, we, we have the issue of saturation. So we, I just want to make sure that there is no saturation. So using this uh, software attenuation control, I'm increasing the attenuation. So right now there is no attenuation zero. So I'm just keep increasing and I'm going to take a look at this signal level. When it's below zero dB, maybe minus one, minus two dB, I'm going to accept that and I'm just going to record that. And then in my later experiment, I keep everything identical. So, so let's uh, increase the software attenuation. So 4 dB, still this is 0 dB. So that tells you that probably you're suffering from saturation here. So let's increase it even more. Still nothing happening. So I'm just going to go a little bit faster right now. 16, 17. So now it starts appearing. So you see here it's now 31 dB. Uh, so if I'm right at 31 dB, the recorded signal for me is fluctuating. So I'm just going to wait a little bit to see if it stabilizes. So you see that we have some fluctuation. Uh, let's come up with one number that's, let's say, 1.6 minus 1.6. So minus 1.6. So let's remember the 31 dB attenuation that we had. We're going to keep this exactly the same. And uh, we, when we're going to do experiment with horn antenna, I'm going to get, I'm going to use this 31. I mean, unfortunately, that, that's uh, too much attenuation when you're doing it, the measurement considering the propagation loss factor when I'm having uh, my horn antenna. But I have to be consistent in this case. So I'm going to I'm going to keep it exactly for horn antenna. So uh, so let's record this as P transmit minus one point six dB. Okay, now we've done our measurements when we directly connected the two waveguide adapters and we recorded the transmit power. Now we need to put them back into, uh, to a horn antenna and then perform uh, measurements with horn antenna. So what I'm going to do right now is that I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to remove uh, uh, right these cables from the adapter and then connect the horn antenna to them. I can 
go up and connect it to the first horn antenna. Remember, these are identical horn antenna, and this method is, in fact, is based on using identical horn antenna. So I'm gonna be connecting this quick lock. Okay. So now I have my quick lock, and I'm gonna mount the antenna on the test to this one. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the other antenna. I just noticed that this one it's easier for the coax port to be low, so that when I'm when I'm making my connection, it's easier in terms of cable connection. So I'm just gonna do this. this connection go low so now I can easily relatively easily connect this to them. Now I have my connection set up. By the way the way that I mounted this is in the H plane rotation. I'm not gonna rotate the antenna for gain measurements I'm gonna tell you why but just to have an idea, this is the way that I mounted the antenna under test. Now we need to do the same thing for the transmit antenna. So I'm gonna have the waveguide adapter here and I'm gonna use this quick lock to make the connection. One more at the opposite corner. And now I'm just gonna connect them like that. Okay, now this time I'm gonna be connecting it to this mast here and I need to also connect the cable. So if I tighten this a little bit, I can probably make it better kind of. Okay, so this is now set. This is now set. So now what I need to do is to adjust the distance. The distance, of course, I could have it at 1.6 meters, the same thing that we had before. But because if you remember, we have 10 dB attenuation here. And in the software, we also used about if I, if I check it, it's 31 dB in the software you use attenuation. So the attenuation is high. So if I go to 160, maybe the signal would be too small. So uh, what lab volt recommends for this measurement is about one meter. So I'm just gonna make sure that aperture to aperture is about one meter. I need a little bit, perhaps more separation. So both the antenna, both of the antennas are adjusted in a way that they have the same polarization. So I need to bring it a little bit closer. I hope this time it is closer to 100. Yeah, this is almost 100 exactly aperture to aperture. So now, we need to perform another measurements. Remember that we use the same cable. The only thing that we added was horn antenna that we added. And before it was, uh, previous measurement, we connected the two uh, waveguide adapter. Now we have also free space between the antennas. Now, when we are measuring gain, uh, if I wanna be more accurate, I should say I I'm measuring the maximum gain of the antenna. Not uh, so it's not like that at every angles I know this is the gain. I'm measuring the maximum gain. So 
it's very important that to make sure that the antennas are facing toward each other so that the current position is the position that at, at which I have the maximum signal reception. So uh, I'm just going to make sure that I'm at a position at which I have maximum signal level. So to check that, I'm going to start the RF power. And I'm going to take a look at the screen of my data collection. And I'm going to, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to just check the received signal level. So, for example, if I loosen this a little bit, and if I rotate the antenna like that, what, what I see right there with the same attenuation that we had from before is minus 30 dB. Remember, this is very low, but because we have lots of attenuation in our system right now. Minus 30 dB. Now, if I come here, I'm going to have a little bit more. And here, I'm going to have right now minus 23.6 dB. Now, I just want to make sure that I'm operating at the maximum. So I'm, I'm, I'm keep looking at the signal to see if there is a, a spot that I can say the signal is, it, is at maximum. So it seems this is really the maximum that I have which is about minus 23.3 dB. So if I can just tighten it a little bit. And so that would be my maximum signal that I have right now. So I can assume this is my maximum signal. Therefore, this location should correspond to maximum gain. And remember that the antennas are facing each other. So you expect that. And also the polarization is vertical, polarization is vertical. So we have the polarization match. Now I'm going to move away from the antenna and see if the reading change because I'm not close to the antenna. So when I'm moving away from the antenna, it's, it's now it's more like minus 23 dB. Uh, so minus 20, I, I think we should accept minus 23 dB for our received power in this case. So remember, we had one received power when we directly connected them together. Now we have minus 23 dB, and we can now, and we also know that the distance is one meter in this case, then we can find our uh, gain of the antenna. Oh, one thing that I forgot, was the frequency of operation. Frequency of operation, to be exact, frequency of operation in this case is 10.52 gigahertz. So I mentioned that it is close to 10 gigahertz, but the exact is 10.52 gigahertz. Now, what I like to ask you is that based on these measurements that we perform, knowing that the distance is one meter, knowing that the frequency of operation is 10.52, calculate the gain of the horn antenna. Now, the other thing that you, you, you know is that we already knew the half power beam width of this horn antenna. So based on the approximate formula that we have, we can calculate the directivity of the horn antenna. Now, if we assume that the loss within the horn is a small, the directivity of the horn is going to be very close to the gain of the horn. Now, we just calculated gain of the horn using this method, two antenna method. And now you can also calculate the gain of the horn antenna using that approximate formula. And then you can compare these two numbers. We just made our horn antenna, this horn antenna, a standard gain at 10.52 gigahertz. So remember, this wasn't like a pattern. It was maximum gain. So we only know the maximum gain of the antenna. So when we usually say gain of the antenna, it's implicit that we talk about maximum gain unless we show a pattern that at each angle we know the gain. But in this case, it was just maximum gain. So that's why the antenna on the test wasn't rotating. I, I fixed it at the location of maximum reception and I recorded the signal. Now this was done using absolute 
gain measurements and in particular the one that we use was two antenna method this is two identical antenna method and then the result of that was that now I have S stands for a standard G for gain I have now a standard gain antenna at 10.52 gigahertz which is my horn antenna now now imagine that I wanna this was my standard gain horn antenna right now and this is now my uh, a, a different horn with a, with a smaller aperture. Now, if I want to calculate the gain of this smaller horn at the same frequency, I can use this one that I found using absolute gain measurement method as the standard gain, and I just compare this with that. And that brings me to the method that we call gain comparison or comparison gain measurement. So it's based on comparison. So if I want to explain that, so this is based on comparison, and you're going to compare with the standard gain, of course. Now, in this case, what you do, essentially, you, you, can, you, you have a transmitting antenna, and then you have a receiving antenna, of course. Now, this transmitting antenna, in our case, is a horn antenna. But, uh, so what we're going to do, we're going to perform two measurements. The first measurement, we're going to do it with the standard gain. So, and then we're going to record the received signal. So we can just call, we can, let's call that P, a standard gain. The power received by the standard gain. And now we're going to do another measurement. This time, instead of a standard gain, we're going to put the antenna on the test. In our case, it would be the smaller horn, and we're going to keep the same transmit. Now, the received power by this is called, let's call it PAUT. Now, if I write my Fries equation for this case, I'm going to have PSG divided by P transmit is going to be equal to lambda 4 pi R squared gain of transmit gain of a standard gain. So that's what I'm going to have in this case. Now, if I go to the next one, for this one, I'm going to have now PAUT is my received power. So I'm just going to have PAUT is my received power. I'm going to have the same transmit power. And I'm going to have, again, lambda 4 pi r squared. And it, it, remember that here I assume the distance is r. So I'm keeping the same distance in this case. So that's R. And then gain of transmit is the same thing. And gain of receive is my gain of AUT. So that's essentially the, the two equations that I have. Now, given these two equations, you can, of course, say, OK, let's divide these two equations. So let's, di let's divide this equation by this. Then the result become P. SG, maybe if I use a different color, it's more clear. So if I divide these two equations, I'm going to have PSG, this one, divided by PAUT, by division PT and PT cancel. These lambda divided by 4 pi r is the same. It cancels, gain of T cancel, and then I'm going to have gain of a standard gain and gain of AUT. Now, if you want to go to dB scale, you get the log, 10 log. Therefore, you're going to get PSG in dB minus PAUT in dB. That would be, if you take the log of this, would be equal to gain of a standard gain in dB minus gain of AUT in dB. Now, if you look at that, we already know the gain of a standard gain at that frequency. We're going to measure the power received by a standard gain in this experiment. So we know this one, too. We're going we're gonna to measure the P received by the AUT in this case. And then 
knowing these three, we can always find gain of AUT, which is our unknown. So again, the assumption that I had was that R is the same. One assumption that I, I, I didn't talk about that is that the, essentially we, we are assuming that we have perfect match for both a standard gain and AUT here. So the load that we have is perfect match to the antenna. Now, uh, now that we talked about this comparison method, let's go and measure the gain of this smaller horn antenna. Now we're gonna use a comparison gain measurement to find the gain of a smaller horn antenna. So to do that, we need to first do one experiment with this horn antenna that is in fact our standard gain horn antenna. You, by now you've calculated the gain of this horn antenna based on our previous uh, uh, measurements. Now, what I'm gonna do is that I need to record the received power. In the previous measurements, because we directly connected the waveguard adapter, we applied so much attenuation so that we don't get to saturation. But now we don't need that anymore, so I can reduce my attenuation and record a better signal because if I go by my previous measurement, the, the signal would be very small. If you remember, it was a bit smaller than minus 20 dB. So I'm just gonna reduce the attenuation so that I have a better signal level. So right now, if you remember in the previous measurement, the level of attenuation was 31 dB in software. So now I'm just gonna bring it down to uh, to let's say right now I'm at 12 dB attenuation in the software and I'm seeing about minus one minus 1.8 dB. So the signal that I'm receiving right now is about minus 1.8 dB. So let's write it down and then I'm gonna change the standard gain and I'm gonna go to the smaller horn antenna. So minus 1.8 dB and the attenuation level that in the software we applied was 12 dB. So I'm gonna turn off the RF and I'm gonna remove the standard gain from this system. So let's remove the standard gain now the standard gain is removed. That was my standard gain. Now I need to go and have the smaller horn antenna and then I'm gonna use that. So, so this is the a smaller horn antenna that we have. So as you see, the aperture is a smaller compared to the standard gain. Let me have the standard gain so that you can compare the aperture. So definitely this is a smaller. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna connect the waveguide adapter to it. So that's my waveguide adapter. And I'm gonna connect this quick lock. So now I have, I have this. The only thing I need to do is to connect this pin so that I can mount it on this mast. So, okay, that's the connection that I have. And remember, this is now vertically polarized. So I need to place my antenna like that to be also vertically polarized to be polarization matched. So now that's, that's ready. I'm just gonna place it here and I'm gonna tighten it a little bit. Okay, so this is now, I can now connect my cable to the antenna, the new antenna on the test. I might not be at the same distance. So I'm just gonna check the distance between the aperture to aperture so now I need, it's about two centimeter or so uh, larger than uh, 100 centimeter, one meter. So 
So I'm just gonna bring this a little bit forward and I'm gonna measure that again. It's still, I, I need to bring it a little bit forward. Right now it's 100 centimeter. So I'm consistent with my previous measurements that was about uh, this. Now I'm just gonna uh, go away from this area to measure, uh, to have this measurement more accurately. So right now, what I'm seeing right now, based on this is about minus 6.8. So maybe when I move the antenna, I had, because before I was reading a little bit uh, larger amplitude to make sure that I'm still in terms of polarization match good. Let me start moving the antenna to make sure that uh, there is no issue with the alignment of the antenna. No, it is still. It's my, my reading is right now is minus six point. So it, it's changing, uh, but it seems it's it's about to it's almost minus 6.4. So minus 6.4 is the received signal in this case. So now you know uh, the power of the standard gain that we measured, the power of the AUT that we measured, you know the gain of the standard gain, and you would be able to calculate the gain of this a smaller horn antenna. Now, what you should get when you are calculating, remember that this gain is related to the aperture. Uh, so effective aperture, in fact, but then effective aperture is also related to geometrical aperture in this case. So the aperture of this smaller horn antenna has been decreased. So you expect that the gain of this antenna is smaller than the gain of our standard gain. So make a note of minus 6.4 dB in this case, and uh, let's calculate what would you get for the gain of this a smaller horn antenna.